All right. Welcome, everybody. It is Wednesday, September 13th, back for another Node Operator Roundtable talking about the big Leap 5.0 upgrade. Um, so following up now, we're working on disabling deferred transactions. Uh, would also love to, you know, following up on the last call, we talked on the uh, early API testing, maybe get a little check-in on how that's going and some of the uh, documentation related to that. Um, actually, before we look at mainnet status, um, looks like we're all set on both Jungle and Kylin. We'll be running some some of our substreams to see if that holds true, like if there's actually no uh, foreseeing no deferred transactions getting through now that all the BPs have reported that they've turned off deferred transactions. Um, so stay tuned for results there. But as far as we can tell, all of the BPs on both Jungle and Kylan have now disabled deferred transactions. If anyone has anything they'd like to say or add besides, thank you everybody who uh, who participated there and helped poke folks who needed poking. I saw you doing some poking there, Michael. Thank you. No uh, problem. All right, let's move on then to mainnet. So we're uh, the goal for for EOS is to have disabled by September fourteenth. We're well on track. Um, that's tomorrow. Uh, in the top twenty one, we're just missing one. Uh, sorry, two EPs have have yet to report that they've disabled deferred transactions. Everyone else has, and we're even tracking the top standby BPs. Um, so. There we go. Just a little missed from the, from these this group here that we don't have any any data on yet. Uh, so we'll rerun our substream on mainnet too once we believe everyone has been have has it disabled, and uh, just to confirm that, and we'll do the same on Jungle and Kylan and report back the results we see there. Anything to add on mainnet? All right, moving right along. Um, maybe we can talk a little bit about the uh, API node testing. Um, I don't know if I want to turn it to Brian for this or if, or if there's anyone who's already been playing with this that has any feedback they want to share now, but I think there was some feedback on documentation required before we can really proceed further on the testing. How's that looking? Right. So uh, Eric actually uh, has executed through the test plan and, and sort of had had some uh, feedback internally. Um, I don't know, Eric, do you want to share some of your experiences there and, and what changes you made based on that? Yeah. I mean, we got some good feedback on the build instructions. Uh, they weren't... Um, they weren't really there. So I added those uh, build instructions to the, the document. Um, I've been going through and, and playing with it, um, checking out the, in the, the, the uh, optimized compiler and the release chain base size. I haven't gotten around to looking at the Prometheus metrics. Um, and then also I've been trying to do some uh, um, like proofs of correctness tests using various SDKs that we have, uh, and that has not gone too well because the proof of correctness tests, like for Wharf, for example, um, they were based on test data. And when I tried to regenerate the test on the mainnet snapshot, it didn't work out. Uh, so instead, I'm going to have to do another approach where I'm putting together um, a test harness or read only transactions. You generate some load and uh, do some benchmarking. Uh, if anybody else has feedback uh, and things they want to see, improvements, um, lay it on me. So those those uh, additional build instructions are those added here? Yes, sir. They're at the very bottom. Cool. 
uh, build instructions. There we go. All right. Any feedback from any of our node operators? Anyone had a chance to try running through these instructions yet? No. Last week I, I had other dumpster fires that I cussed. Yeah, heavily. I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> I do have the node still running. It's on the EOS to get a benchmark of the EOS footprint, but beyond that, no. Yeah, one one of the coolest things is if you do get a chance to do this, load it up with a snapshot, you'll have to do that because the changes in uh, boost and the changes in chain base. Uh, go take a look at chain base size before and after. Pretty cool. It gets smaller. And um, taking a step back to uh, the previous topic, I just noticed a comment here from Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. It looks like Bitfinex has not disabled based on what we're seeing. I'm not sure if it was just me. Um, <laughs> no, it was, I it. it was for me too. All right. Yeah, Danny, you, you need to pay your internet bill. <laughs> Oh, am I, am I cutting out? Sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, and I see a comment here from Steven. Yeah, maybe I will steer us off topic for just one second, um, and then I'll let you guys get back on task. Sorry for hijacking the call for just a second, but I did want to bring awareness to uh, BPs that there are some MSIGs up for both Jungle and EOS mainnet as it pertains to the EOCVM next release, uh, we need to create a couple of new accounts and I've included the links there. If anyone does have any questions around the purpose and function there, I can share some additional documentation, but the general idea is that there's one account uh, that we're introducing for the management of ERC standard, ERC 20 standard tokens. And then we also are introducing an account that's kind of a proxy account that uh, we'll use for the deposit function to EOCVM, wherein uh, you can either send uh, EOS token standard or the ERC20 token standard, and it will appropriately manage that to help you bridge your various token types onto EOS EVM. Um, so we're on 12 of 15, I think, for Jungle, the last that I looked. And then um, the one for Mainnet, I think we just got up like at like 5 in the morning today. Um, that one's less critical, but the Jungle one I'm just being annoying about because uh, once we have that in place, we can deploy the latest release that we have to jungle and we're trying to kind of get this stuff out the door probably near the end of september or early october however we haven't committed to a date for this product just yet so if anyone has any questions feel free to let me know and uh, thanks for letting me steal the mic for just a second no problem any questions all right um so back, I think we've, didn't sound like there's any feedback on this either. Pause. All right. Any, um, any specific questions or asks Brian or anyone else from the ENF on this topic before we move on for maybe stuff to, to between now and the next, next call that we're looking for that hasn't already been discussed. No, just, you know, um, sort of the, the same, if, if you could take a look and try to get through it. And if you get stuck anywhere, um, reach out on Telegram, uh, in the Antelope node operators, uh, um, channel and, um, yeah, we, we'd appreciate help doing, doing this early testing. Thanks folks who have already taken a look and given feedback. Yeah, we, we had some discussions on the. This is the API node, so read only. So we had some discussions on configuration settings for the read only threads on that on that forum, uh, and that's something that I'm interested in doing is generating some load and trying to benchmark uh, number of read only threads. Um, you know, not not slight differences between one and two threads, but really between like eight, sixteen, and thirty two threads. Uh, and to see what that's like. It shouldn't add a lot of memory, so we should be able to run with quite a few threads. Uh, and I just want to make sure that that 
uh, works how I, how I think it's going to work. So that's what I'm working on next to get a, a recommendation together for those read only threads. Um, well, and but in, if you, if you've got some cannons, you can fire like on EOS, your mainnet data, I can open up my API nodes and let you just smash them. It's a dedicated node that you can just have private access to, but point your tools at them if that would help. That is great, but I, I just want to do that on my local host first. Before. You have an EOS API node that you can smash this not out of? Yes. Ah, okay, cool. I do. I do. It's about, yes, I do. Uh, yeah, so um, we'll do. I'll do that first, and then we'll go on to the the next stage and, and generate some load. It'll be fun. But uh, yeah, uh, if anybody has any questions about config settings, uh, be great to put those in the forum too, because there's a lot there. Uh, just when I was doing some testing the other day, I had to go back to the spreadsheet to find the config setting that I needed for uh, for something to work. So thank you, Michael, for putting that together. Yeah, it's not just read-only transactions. You know, it's get table rows as well. Mm -hmm. you know, all runs in parallel. Really cool. Yeah, I'd be interested to know the details of what you found you needed to go back and get, even if it's just like a sanitized version of your config, to see what, when you banged your head through it, what did you end up with? <laughs> That's how we've kind of got all these different configs, so... Yeah, I was doing uh get uh was it get um get account by authorization um call and I needed to turn on the um what's that parameter for the coward queries. Yeah. Account queries, yeah. So so this just features perfect, perfect. I was curious if there were any of the other knobs you were turning, but glad it helped. See what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, I have to look at it. I don't think the the account queries is improved at all by the uh, extra threads. Yeah, I, I've just test. I was just testing for correctness right now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That that particular subset was already supported multi-threaded um, by upping the HTTP threads. Uh, so I don't think it has any additional benefit with the read only. All right. Last call on that topic. Well, let's move on then. Uh, I saw, Brian, you've been updating some of the dates here and related to the, um, what was it here? The highlight reel. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we'll, we'll have to push out sending that, uh, that email. Um, we're, we're still, you know, figuring out some schedule sort of across the board for some of these things. Um, so hope to have an update on that soon. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't yet have high real highlight reel ready to go this. Cool. Anything to report, uh, on the instant finality integration stuff that here is tracked to be finished by September 29th. Is that looking on track from your perspective? Yeah, so I think this falls into that category of of uh, looking at dates across the board. I'm confident that that date uh, is not going to happen, um, but I don't have an updated date for you at this time. Okay. So we'll have to, uh, yeah, I guess look at the the downstream dates yeah. flowing from there too once we have a little more. Cool. Um, otherwise, I don't have any, those were the topics I had on my list to cover today. Are there any others that I'm missing that anyone would like to dive into related to the Leap 5.0 upgrade or anything else? We've got plenty of time left on the agenda. What? On, on a scale of 1 to 10, what's the chance I get a ship log repair tool squeezed in anytime soon? Uh, well, I'm not going to say zero, but, uh, I'm also I'll, not going to, I'll accept uh, the, I'll accept the floating point number. Yeah, let's call it zero point 
<laughs> one, which technically is not in the scale of one to ten, but uh, it is if you accept floating point. It's greater than zero. All right, that yeah, I'll work on trying to work around it, but. Anything else? Well, in that case, we can give everybody some time back. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll check back in next week. Uh, Brian, let me know if, if between now and next week there's any anything on the date side of things that we can, we can uh, prepare yep. to update folks on for the next call. Otherwise, we'll see you all next week. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Cheers, people. Cheers.